This conference will now be recorded. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. We will say that we are starting this meeting at 7.05 p.m. Um, we have uh, Jennifer and Muriel, and uh, we have uh, Jen, who is listening in uh, through the phone line and will contact me if she has anything that she would like to have brought to the meeting, the attention of the meeting. Um, and so we do have quorum. Uh, thank you everyone for taking the time tonight. Uh, it's a busy time for sure. So, um, welcome everyone. Uh, number three, a confirmation of agenda. Any uh, changes, anything that anyone would like to see different on the agenda or added? Uh, could we have a motion then and a seconder to uh, confirm the agenda? Muriel, a seconder? So there's only four of us tonight, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to share these duties. Um, as the chair, it's probably best I don't second, or what do you think, Holly? Yeah, so we would need a seconder from um, Jennifer or Jan. Okay, uh, Jan will second. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Um, Number four, declaration of pecuniary interest. Anyone that needs to declare financial interest, any of our business? Okay. Um, number five, uh, delegations yep. and presentations. There are none. And number six, um, any changes to the minutes of the April 26th meeting. Hearing none, do we have a motion to accept the minutes? Or the, approve the minutes? Jennifer? <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to do the last one, but I'm getting some weird feedback on my SMS. So you're, okay. still, you're still hearing screeching? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have you'll move the minutes. I have two computers open, so I got to close one. Okay. I was using one. This minute. Uh, you will. You will move that the minutes be approved, Jennifer? Yes. 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 Okay, Jennifer and a seconder. Muriel, thank you. Okay, number seven. So just before we start, and I think uh, uh, Dave will be presenting uh, much of this material, um, I just want to acknowledge the amount of work that's gone into these uh, next few items. Um, collectively, the work, uh, in particular, um, Dave and Holly, I think, have been busy um, getting these uh, ready. And um, our goal tonight is to take sort of this last look at these items uh, with the view to approving them so they could be, be presented tomorrow to a committee of the whole. If we can accomplish that this evening, we're probably about a month ahead of our schedule we set earlier on. So uh, so be sure that if you have uh, items or concerns or, or uh, things that you want clarified, uh, be sure to speak up. So I'll turn it over to David. You're muted. You're muted, Dave. Sorry about that. I was just 
I was looking up on my computer some things I wanted to make sure we had in front of us here. Um, so maybe could you, someone, can Holly or Lindsay pull up the terms of reference on the screen? Okay, so I just wanted to go over this with the committee because uh, um, we met here recently with uh, Muriel and, and Martin and uh, Jerry on uh, on uh, these presentations. And one thing that got brought up was uh, there was uh, some information that we've been talking about that we maybe should include in the terms of reference, I would suggest, uh, and call it after purpose there is uh, four principles that I, that I think uh, the committee has talked about. And I'm not, I just want to confirm, did they make it into the agenda? Because I'm trying to keep a bunch of different documents open here at the same time, but not doing a great job. Um, did the terms of reference? principles in? where, uh, yes, it did. Yes, okay. Um, And maybe what I'll do is, is uh, did those four uh, principles get included as well, attached? It wouldn't be in this document, it'd be in another document. And, and maybe if you throw it over to me, I could share those. Yep, I can do that, just one moment. Okay, you should be able to share now. Okay, good. So this will make it a bit easier for everyone. So the idea was is to put in this section here, and I'm going to just highlight it in yellow. Um, consider adding section titled principles, and the th four points are everyone has the right to have a home. Different kinds and sizes of housing are needed to meet the needs of people in the community and the township. Uh, neighborless. Maybe I should get Mario to pronounce this one for me, but neighborlessness uh, and community participation is important and need to be supported by every housing project and plan. And all housing projects should include a mix of market subsidized and or rent geared to income and rent to own option percentages to be planned. So, um, that is uh, those four principles that uh, I think the committee had have chatted about. And I'm just wondering if we should, uh, if the committee wants to, we could make a motion and add this in after the purpose and call it a section on principles and make these four part of the terms of reference and take that back to council for ratification. Mr. Chair, you're on mute. Sorry. Okay, so do we have uh, agreement among the committee members present that we should add these four points as principles? I agree. Uh, Wholeheartedly. Okay. Okay, Muriel. Okay. Um, Jan, the principals, are you able to see them there? Okay. Um, so, can we go back to the principals, David, just for a second? Yeah. I think Holly's, there we go. So there they are up in the screen. So uh, Jan, 
four principles are everyone has the right to have a home. Different kinds and sizes of housing are needed to meet the needs of people in this community and township. Neighborly, neighborliness and community participation are important and need to be supported by every housing project and plan. And number four, all housing projects that include a mix of market subsidized and or rent geared to income and rent to own options percentages to be uh, planned. Would, are you in agreement that we include those in our reporting? Okay, so we have uh, unanimous support then to include these uh, principles. Okay, carry on. <clears throat> okay, and uh, uh, maybe we can mention this in passing tomorrow at the uh, council meeting as well. Good, thank you. Mr. Chair, I'm just wondering if we could have a formal motion. Okay, uh, I'm calling for a motion to add these principles to our reporting. Dan, would you make that motion? Uh, okay. Uh, Jan Powell will make the motion. Do we have a seconder? I will. Jennifer, thank you. Okay, Jennifer. All in favor? Okay, carried. Okay. Okay, we'll take that um, down and Holly, I, I sent you those do that document as well. So one of the things that uh, as we go through these uh, items um, will be to decide how they will be presented to the committee of the whole uh, tomorrow. Um, but we we will look at all of the documents. Uh, we'll complete 7.5, and then we will uh, we'll talk about who's presenting tomorrow. Okay. Just so, so you uh, seven point two. 7.2, uh, David, did you want to speak to this? Sure, uh, I can do that. Do you want to just bring up uh, that presentation, Colleen? So this is uh, your uh, Southgate Affordable Attaining Housing Advisory Committee uh, report to council for the spring of 2022. Um, and uh, we put it together um, and uh, reviewed it with uh, three members of your committee. Uh, maybe the next slide then, Holly. If there's any questions, just speak up and uh, we can uh, so what this uh, next slide is, it's a committee terms of reference was created by council that defined the committee's purpose, responsibilities, membership, put details in there about chair and vice chair appointments, uh, conditions about quorum, reporting and resources uh, for the committee, meeting schedule and terms of the committee, or term of the committee being this term of council, the remuneration and the glossary of terms uh, for the committee. Next slide, please. So the committee held, has held seven meetings since, uh, and that may be incorrect because maybe we didn't count this one, but uh, seven meetings since September. The first one was September 28th of 2022. It's the fourth Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. with the exception of December. Next slide. Uh, what uh, have uh, the, has the committee been doing? The committee is, had completed an ori orientation at the first meeting. They've reviewed and approved the uh, Southgate Affordable Attainable Housing Advisory Committee terms of reference document that was put before them. They've gathered information and they've created action items. Next slide. So uh, as far as uh, 
what's been going on or what we've been doing is information gathering. The committee's uh, gathered or, and received reports from staff on development charges and building fees, affordable ho housing options being rental, starter, or ownership, uh, anything from tiny homes, lease, land lease, uh, housing parks, secondary suites, seniors accessible, low maintenance accommodations. Uh, we've also had presentations on uh, uh, the new official plan review and, and those housing policies that are in the official plan. Southgate owned uh, surplus lands have been uh, investigated as well as the mortgage and housing corporation report uh, to the committee. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, more information gathering as far as delegations and reports. So uh, re we received uh, Henry Shaw of Gray County Housing presented, White Rose Developers, Flat Oak Group, Ron Davidson, our planner for the new official plan, he presented on that document, and Clint Stredwick uh, attended and talked about Southgate planning in general. The actions taken, members were each assigned in uh, areas of uh, interest or specialization to report back uh, on during co committee meetings. There's a list of uh, created of a list of 26 affordable housing goals and or tasks. The committee ranked those 26 and focused uh, are focusing on the top seven tasks as priorities and uh, developed two committee resolutions for Southgate Council to consider that will be reported on later in this uh, presentation. So there was uh, seven tasks, uh, priority tasks as we indicated, and this is the first three. Applying a housing first policy to work with developers of uh, privately owned property. Applying a housing first policy to use municipally owned surplus land and to conduct a community survey and data collection. Next slide. The fourth, fifth, and seventh, sixth, and seventh slide or, uh, task are to investigate the merits of forming an attainable housing development corporation, consider reducing or waiving development charges, explore the existing planning policy frameworks and zoning bylaw, and update the official plan with and zoning bylaw to accommodate additional residential housing models and types. Next slide. So to uh, apply a housing first policy, uh, we looked at what is the definition of housing first to, to really put some definition there. So in our terms of reference, housing first is uh, defined as an evidence based best practice or program in which homeless individuals are assisted first to meet their housing needs before they are required to meet any other treatment expectations or other supports are implemented. Housing, refer, housing first refers to a specific program with unique approaches and resources, whereas housing first is a philosophy based on meeting a person's most basic needs for housing unconditionally that is not tied to one specific program. Next slide. What is housing first? What we need to uh, is really for developers to uh, acknowledge people's different needs and ensure there is a variety of housing types being built. And uh, we're going to need to work at, at getting those policies in place or enhancing policies that we may have. But I think that's something we need to explore a bit further with the present policies we have at the present time. The discussion is, do we have too many big expensive houses built now and few that are the size and price to be affordable and attainable for more people? That's the real question. Next slide. So this is task number two, I believe. No, sorry. So um, in relation to apply housing first policy to privately owned land, 
the recommendation to council is to implement policy to require future residential development approvals to have a percentage of affordable attainable housing builds incorporated into each of your, their projects and to support local employers through the approval process and incentives to create employee housing. I'm getting a little message up here. Is everybody able to still hear me? Yep. Okay, good. Yep. I see a thumbs up, but I know it sounds like there's a bit of a slowdown on the network tonight. So the, the next slide, the recommendation to council is to implement a policy to require future residential development approvals. Didn't we say this one already? Oh, sorry, yeah, we did. Next slide. So number two, apply a housing first policy to use municipally owned surplus land. And what the committee head staff do is investigate urban and rural owned township lands that could be used as affordable attainable housing projects. We investigate the viability of the list of urban and rural township owned lands that could be used as private or public affordable attainable housing projects. We identified one on Ganelk Street, the Proton Station Parkland, and uh, the other option is to purchase uh, private sector lands for future use. Next slide. So number three is to conduct a, a data survey um, and, and collect that data. The committee has created a community survey to uh, receive and, and mine that feedback data. The survey will be posted and distributed through the township's website, social media, municipal office, library, uh, front counters, and as well through a, a other social support partners. To inform the another goal of the uh, survey is to inform and educate the community on the housing needs and options that uh, are needed and 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 will be explored. Um, and and there's a saying called Yimby, uh, yes, in my backyard housing projects. Uh, that's the idea. There is to look at uh, uh, educating the community through these surveys to make sure they understand the need and they uh, integrate. Um, housing of any type into a community of, uh, of a residential development. And the uh, last but not least is collecting ideas and receiving feedback uh, through the survey process to help feed the committee with uh, future ideas for discussion and, and investigation. Next slide. So the Southgate Attainable Affordable Housing advisory committee community survey basically touches on about uh, six areas and what the information and outcomes we are looking for in this community survey are is again to educate and, and awareness create awareness of the housing challenges people face in our community it's uh, basic current housing satisfaction how satisfied are you in the community with the serving sorry with the services and the housing services available type of housing that would fit your present needs. So we're asking those, that type of question. Are you looking for rental, uh, you know, family home, uh, seniors uh, accommodations? What type of uh, accommodations are you looking for? Feedback on housing options, Southgate should uh, have more of. Seeking information on homelessness. We hope that isn't a, a problem, but uh, we do hear of people couch surfing and uh, needing accommodations of their own and surveying the community on their top three housing needs or priorities to see if we can mine that data to, to really get the, the ones we should be hitting on early. Next slide. Investigate number four is investigate the merits of forming an attainable housing corp, uh, development corporation. The committee has requested Southgate staff create a presentation and proposal to develop a partnership to create a housing development corporation with the goals of Developing a Southgate uh, Municipal Partnership with Great Highlands, Hanover, Southgate, and West Grade, creating an attainable housing development corporation, sharing cost of an employee to set up and manage the attainable housing development corporation, and creating a management structure to include a terms of reference, an agreement on municipal oversight, 
relationships, and decision making on business plan, financial contributions, and board member expertise. Next slide. Number five is consider reducing or waiving development charges. So the committee recommends that council consider discussions and new policies in 2022 development charges review process to support long-term rental housing projects that will sustain affordable attainable housing for a period of not less than 20 years. If DC policies are changed to reduce or waive fees, it would have to be approved by a development agreement and, the reg and registered on the property title of the project to maintain that affordable status. And lastly, to identify and recommend other financial incentives or reduction of develop developers' costs. Next slide. So number six and number seven have some common uh, themes to them, uh, but uh, the number six is to explore existing planning policy frameworks and zoning bylaw. Committee recommends council reflect on Southgate's new official plan housing policies, explore the existing planning policy framework and zoning bylaw. Uh, Southgate zoning by bylaw should have a comprehensive review be made as a priority to support housing and changes being made in the rural community planning policies to create a residential, residential units and address affordable housing crisis in communities. Next slide. So number seven is to update the official plan, which has been done, uh, but uh, to also update the zoning bylaw to accommodate ad additional residential units. The committee recommends that we identify the changes in the official plan and zoning bylaws to support implementing housing and development options. And Southgate's new official plan housing policies report on housing supply, intensification, affordability, and secondary dwelling units related to related type policies. Next slide. So now we get into just, uh, and we'll try and go through these relatively quickly, but uh, these, uh, th this is the points out of the new official plan. And for the committee's purpose, uh, we thought it was important to really reflect, and we'll take uh, considerably more time when presenting to council but to go through these new official plan policies and reflect with council um, what is in there, because I'm afraid uh, that they may have got glossed over earlier and not uh, focused on as strongly as they maybe should be. So this is our opportunity to, uh, you know, bring them to a higher level of uh, of light and uh, understanding with the, with council. So first, at 3.4, says that the township will ensure that a variety of housing types is provided to satisfy the present and future social, health, safety, and well being requirements of residents. Pretty strong statement. Number two, under housing, is particular attention needs to be given to housing for people with special needs, including assisted housing for low income households, seniors' housing, and housing for persons with disabilities, et cetera. Next slide. So under supply 3.4.1 in the new official plan, it states that township will ensure that residential growth can be accommodated for a minimum of 15 years through residential intensification, redevelopment and new residential development within the designated settlement areas of the township. Next slide. So again, under supply point two, uh, given the servicing limitations within the settlement areas, however, most of the residential growth in the township will occur within Dundalk. Lower density development within the unsettled settlement, sorry, unserviced settlement areas may be considered where the site conditions are suitable for communal and individual wells and septic systems and were permitted by this official plan. Medium and high density housing shall generally only be considered in, in Dundalk. Next slide. Supply number three, 
the township will also ensure that at least three year supply of residential land is available through lands already zoned to facilitate residential intensification and redevelopment of draft plan, draft approved plans of subdivision or registered plans. Next slide. Under intensification 3.4.2, residential intensification shall be achieved by developing vacant and under, underutilized lots within the existing developed areas, allowing for a secondary dwelling unit apartment within new dwellings and converting or expanding existing residential buildings to create new residential dwellings, converting or expanding existing industrial, commercial or institutional buildings for residential use and redeveloping brownfield sites. Intensification number two, it is recognized that intensification may require relief from one or more provisions of the township zoning bylaw. Such relief shall be granted where council is satisfied that proper land use planning is occurring. Next slide. Affordability, 3.4.3. Affordable, affordable housing is defined as follows. In the case of home ownership is at least is the least expensive of the following. Housing where the purchase price is at least 10% below the average price of a resale unit in Gray County or annual housing expenses do not exceed 30% of the gross, gross household income for low and moderate incomes, i.e. before tax household income. Next slide. I think we've been, no. Can you go back one? Yeah, this next one, Dave, is about rental housing. Oh, sorry, okay, yes. Yes, affordable, affordable housing is defined as follows. In the case of, uh, this is so 1B, that was my mistake. In the case of rental housing is at least, ex is least expensive as, of the following. At or below an average market rent in Gray County. So that's average. And rent prices do not exceed 30% of the gross household income for low and moderate incomes. I'm just going to do something there just to make that easier to uh, I want to bold that what slide number was that Holly 529 thank you Maybe I'll send you a new version after um, the meeting tonight, and I'm going to bold ownership and rental just to make sure that pulls out a bit better um, when we present tomorrow. Um, next slide, please. Okay, you're there, I think. 3.4.3 affordability, point number two, the township strongly encourages affordable ownership and rental housing and in this regard has set a target of 30% of all dwellings to fall within the pre this price range. The bulk of the affordable rental units will likely be provided in the form of secondary suites as explained below. Now point four, semi-attached dwellings, townhomes and low rise apartment buildings and secondary suites generally provide the best opportunities for affordable housing. Next slide. Affordability point number five, in order to encourage affordable housing, the township may consider a request for a grant in lieu of residential development charges, planning fees and building permit fees in return for a commitment by the developer to meet specialized, or sorry, specified affordability targets. Number six, the township will actively support the county's efforts to establish an affordable housing committee and their 
efforts to increase the amount of affordable housing within the township and throughout Gray County. Next slide. Affordability, point number seven. This official plan also encourages the creation of new dwellings that do not fall within the affordable housing category to still be financially attainable for low and medium income households wherever possible. Point number eight, the township may also give consideration to a variety of zoning standards and subdivision design standards where appropriate, including smaller lot areas and frontages, reduced yard requirements and increased lot coverage in order to facilitate affordable and attainable housing. In some instances, it may also be appropriate to reduce the on-site parking requirements of the zoning bylaw as a means of facilitating more affordable and attainable housing. Next slide. Affordability point number nine. During the next update of the township zoning bylaw and also at other appropriate times, the township will give consideration to pre-zoning specific properties or general areas of Dundalk to allow more increased densities and facilitate affordable or attainable housing, including rental units. Point number 10, the township zoning bylaw should include a minimum four area requirement that allows for small and afford, get off my screen here, whoever you are. Um, I just had an email come in, sorry. For small affordable dwellings in all zones where residential dwellings are permitted, the zoning bylaw could simply defer the Ontario Building Code for minimum floor area requirements. Sorry, defer to the Ontario Building Code for minimum floor area requirements. Next slide. Just uh, wanting to underline that section because I'm wondering if Bev might be there just to talk to that point. Did you, you're on the phone, I believe, Clint. Do you have any comments regarding that uh, comment? The zoning bylaw could simply defer to the Ontario Building Code for minimum floor area requirements. Are they different than what, or what, what's that really saying? So, um, at the present time, there there's a, a different like it's it's fairly high actually for what the minimum size house you can have in the zoning bylaw, and uh, rather than lo simply lower it, what we're and say or say there's no requirement, what we've said is we're deferring to the Ontario Building Code which stipulates the minimum size for things for based on safety and that sort of thing. So we're taking it out of the zoning bylaw, but we're just leaving it up to the Ontario building code and making sure whatever they do build is still safe. Okay. So does the, just to expand on that discussion and maybe there'll be some, some other discussion come out of this, but should there not be some correlation between lot frontage, lot coverage, and the house size of the house, should there, that not be in some sort of balance? Uh, no, that actually doesn't need to be the case. Um, you could have 100 acres and put a tiny home on it if you wanted to. No, uh, I, get, I, I get that. I'm talking more for residential density purposes, like if we're trying to intensify and also, you know, kind of uh, make, okay, so let's say a developer comes along and they want to put uh, narrower lots in and, and uh, so on. Should there be a grid that we follow that says, okay, in order to get a 1500 square foot house or a thousand square foot house, you can go as low as this width of lot or this lot density or this lot depth. I, I don't know. Like when we, we sometimes we're, we hear people talking about back to back and all this sort of stuff. Well, um, what we do is we, we have a lot coverage still, right? So yeah. you can make your lot as small as you want, 
but you still have to meet the lot coverage requirements. So if you go, usually in Dundalk, it's around 30 or 40%, somewhere around that. So if you build a small home on it, technically, or a bunch of small homes, your lots can be fairly small and you can still meet the, the lot coverage requirements. Right, right? So okay. That lot coverage yeah. is mainly for stormwater purposes, which, Southgate has issues with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, an, a too narrow, too narrow lot frontage property, and you're trying to park a car there, and in the wintertime, we're trying to park some snow and possibly a sidewalk to get rid of the snow off the sidewalk. Those are some of the challenges that we have to worry about for lot coverage and frontage and all that sort of stuff, too. But yeah, anyway, so we're, right now, we're not suggesting changing the frontage or the lot coverage as of yet it, we're removing the the size requirement mainly to make the, the house if they do get a lot they can make the house smaller and and cheaper right because typically right, right. smaller home less cost less materials more and more efficient um so that's the premise it's building on if we want to expand on that then we'd we'd look a developer actually would look at doing a subdivision like this or something where they planned it out and at that time we would look at the frontages to see if they made sense or not for snow storage and that sort of thing right okay and you know if we're going to someday i mean let's just finish this discussion so everybody because we've had a fair bit of discussion about these back-to-back -back type homes that's where you might have to do away with parking and have more a communal parking lot for back-to-back -back type homes. Uh, that type of Not development. necessarily. Um, no. We have an example of back-to-back -back homes in Southgate already um, between Gold and Hagen um, there uh, that were put up. So it is possible to put them up uh, and and still have parking and whatnot you, you you're just it foregoing some of those standard things that you would normally have so instead of a rear yard to to play in you're going to have a maybe a bigger side yard to play in or front yard to play in those kinds of things but it makes it a little more uh, convenient in that case to have them back to back okay good any questions around that? Just I thought that was maybe a good discussion for the committee to have. Uh, if not, we'll go back to uh, next slide uh, for 3.4.4. Secondary dwelling units. A secondary dwelling unit is defined as either a second unit within a principal dwelling, i.e. an apartment, or a dwelling united, or sorry, a dwelling unit situated within a separate building that is ancillary to the principal dwelling on the site. Secondary dwelling at all is number two is also uh, units provided that provide excellent opportunity for affordable housing, sorry, affordable rental housing and or for the provision of housing for a family member in need of some level of supervision. Next slide. Secondary dwelling units number three, Within the des designated urban areas, a secondary dwelling unit will be permitted within a detached dwelling. A secondary dwelling unit or dwelling within a semi-detached dwelling or townhouse may be considered where the landowner can appropriately address matters related to parking, congestion, snow storage space, and visual impact of the, on the streetscape. Point number four, a secondary dwelling unit within an ancillary building will also be permitted on larger lots outside of the settlement areas subject to restrictions on unit size, location on the property, and sharing of driveways, etc. Next slide. Secondary dwelling units, point number five. The provisions for secondary dwelling units will be provided in the comprehensive zoning bylaw. And then the last uh, point under short-term accommodations, which is not really, I'm not sure how much uh, this committee is interested in that, but uh, there is a statement we, do, we didn't expand on it a whole lot other than the township recognizes that short-term accommodations is, is something that uh, we need some of, 
uh, how much uh, is uh, maybe a discussion for another time or uh, maybe it's not even something on this committee's radar at this point. I think, it's important. I think it's important that it's there, David. Okay. We don't need to expand on it, but I think it's important that it's there because it's a recognition yep. uh, that it's another form of housing. So correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We can and we we should present it that way then. So the committee uh, did uh, part of the progress was they created two resolutions. Resolution number one was uh, on November the twenty third, twenty twenty one was moved by Jerry McNulty, seconded by Michael Shearson, and the resolution was be it resolved that the committee recommend that council consider a method that would encourage a certain percentage of new development approved contain affordable and or attainable housing, and that was carried by the committee. The next one is resolution number two, and that was approved on April the 26th, 2022, moved by Councillor Michael Shearson, seconded by um, Morgan McCannell, be it resolved that the committee appoint Jerry McNulty and Muriel Scott to work with the CEO and the mayor to create a presentation proposal to neighboring municipalities for a South Gray affordable housing strategy and staff lead. And that resolution was carried. Next slide. So considerations to increase housing and you know when we get to council we can talk about those uh, those more. Uh, those last two, but uh, considerations to increase housing. Great, housing. great County housing is obviously an option. Promote uh, the increase of rental housing stock in the community. Residential developers uh, being required to uh, incorporate a percentage of affordable attainable housing in each future sub approved subdivision agreement development project. And existing property conversions or builds to include or increase the affordable attainable housing options. Private sector affordable builds in partnership with the use of municipal lands. And the last one, employer projects where they build for the purpose of supporting their employees uh, and providing rental housing uh, for that, their company. Next slide. Housing projects that are uh, in process, uh, Great County Housing Rose Lane Rebuild, Two employers are developing projects for worker affordable rental accommodations. The Lions Medical Center conversion uh, by Southeast Gray Support Services, uh, leading the project in 2024 to create seven units of affordable housing in the discussion phase with the Lions Club. Southeast Gray Support uh, Community Health Center proposal to construct 10 units of affordable housing in the medical center for township as consideration. And next slide. I think that is, oh, future housing, recommended projects to increase community options. Private sector affordable rental projects, employers developing projects for worker affordable accommodations, and the last one being housing park development projects to site modular, tiny, or trailer residential units that provide homeowners with land leases and services. And that's one, that last one is going to need uh, some changes in policy by Gray County uh, Planning Department to, in order to make the policy uh, fit fit what the, is some people are trying to uh, to get going. Next slide, and I believe that's likely the end of the presentation, and we'll entertain questions. So any comments or questions will be taken here, and I'll turn it back to uh, Jerry you, as chair to. Discuss that presentation further. So, this uh, this document is uh, is to be the sort of the summary of uh, discussions that have taken place over the last several months. Um, we've had input from many people. Uh, and certainly conversations at our um, meetings through the last few months uh, where we have had the benefit of having uh, Clinton here to talk about planning and uh, and having uh, Bev sit in and uh, just anyone who has been contributing to this, um, there 
their um, thoughts should be rec recognized or be seen in this document. Um, so at this point, uh, maybe cut to the chase. Uh, or certainly entertain questions, encourage questions, but we do have quorum um, tonight, uh, provided I could vote as a uh, as a committee member. We do have quorum. We could uh, approve this this report to council to go to the council of the whole uh, tomorrow for presentation. So I'm interested in any comments and thoughts from from anywhere, anyone on this uh, on this document. Muriel. Yeah, on the under the housing project, um, I um, I know we've talked about the potential for employers having interest in in um, ensuring accommodation being available for workers, but we actually have two employers who are developing projects now. I I don't think I picked up on that one before. Uh, we have, uh, I know of the one for sure, um, a group that are seriously looking at employee housing. I was not aware of the second one either, other than there just have been loose discussions at this point. Actually, uh, by, by construction uh, is looking at doing it as well. They have land already and they would like to see the policies change. Uh, they would be looking at doing it more in an urban area, um, or sorry, a rural area. The one in Dundalk that we have talked about in the past, they would be interested in doing it in the rural area, urban area, sorry, the urban area, and they're working with their economic development officer to secure land right now. Okay. okay. Uh, the other question I have is um, Southeast Gray Community Health Center. Oh, yes. Sorry. I'm getting my uh, services mixed up. Um, yes, their proposal to construct um, with the extra floor. Yeah. So, is, is that a go? <laughs> it is. Uh, well, I think it's uh, just putting it back in front of council. It's not a go. It is a proposal in front of council that uh, I have presented. And uh, I think that's part of this whole housing corporation, if we can maybe get that off the ground. Um, it's still a council decision that has to be made if they want to support such a build until it could be taken over by a housing corporation. That's the, that's really where it's at. It, uh, it's gonna be tough because we likely only have about five, four and a half to five months to decide before they've got to go ahead and, and uh, drop their plans and get going. Yeah. Okay, very good, thanks. Uh, Jennifer, had you some thoughts? <laughs> First of all, I'd just like to thank, I, I believe it's Dave and Holly, is that right, for putting this together? Because I, having done slide presentations myself, know how time consuming they are. Um, so thank you. Um, I do feel like uh, I can see bits and pieces of all the different things that we've discussed along the way. Uh, coming through in the in this report. Um, for, <laughs> at the risk of sounding like an old retired teacher, um, four or five <laughs> editing things jumped out at me on the slides as we were going through. And did, did, did who's, who's got the uh, editing um, ability to, is that you, Dave, that you can go in and? Uh, well, Holly or I, do you wanna point them out to us? Uh, uh, can I just email them instead of like going through them one-on-one? Absolutely. One -on -one? Abs yeah, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> that, would be, that would be better. Okay, I will do that. Yeah. I, I found yeah. five, so. <laughs> Good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, Jan, do you have any thoughts or comments about the, the report? Discussion? Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, any further thoughts from uh, Clinton or Bev or... Holly or Lindsay or Mayor John, anybody, any thoughts? None from me, thanks. Okay. So 
at this point, yeah. Um, Bev, did you have something you wanted to add? No, I'm very good with that. It's uh, very well put together. Thank you. Okay. Um, so at this call, time that I'm going to call for a motion uh, for the committee to support this document and uh, and encourage its uh, presentation tomorrow at the Council Committee of the Whole. It'll be Muriel or Jennifer or Jan that'll have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> okay, Jennifer, thank you. And Muriel, I'll you'll second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, I think we can call that passed. Thank you. Um, moving on to 7.3. And another document that uh, Dave and Holly have worked hard on. And uh, are you are you comfortable presenting this to the committee, Dave? Yes. Yeah. We can. Uh, this one's relatively short, but it's it's just it's a template for the presentation that uh, we would present to uh, the other municipalities, including Southgate, to get buy-in for the South. Uh, Great housing development. If you can just pull that up, Holly. So uh, this presentation is the South Great Housing Development Corporation proposal. And it's just a, it's the initial municipal presentation for June of 2022, which we would take to the other three uh, municipal partners that we are going to consider as Hanover, uh, West Gray, and Great Highlands. Um, and uh, tomorrow, we'll get uh, hopefully get feedback uh, if this is approved to go forward with uh, Southgate Council. Next slide. So why is Southgate leading this proposal? Uh, Southgate Council appointed South Gate Affordable Attainable Housing Advisory Committee, or SAHAC. I think is that, uh, we'll maybe use that as the quick uh, saying, uh, in 2021. SAHAC committee uh, operates under a Southgate Council approved terms of reference. The committee has uh, created 26 housing tasks as a recommendations going forward. And the committee has uh, ranked the tasks in the focus on top seven recommendations for the rest of their 2022 mandate. Next slide. So uh, out of uh, those seven, those uh, seven priorities are listed here. And uh, really without going into great detail because this will be the second time through for here. Uh, we've pointed out obviously housing first is important in the first two points, the survey, and then what we're really here to talk about is investigating the merits of forming an attainable, affordable, or sorry, attainable housing development corporation. Next slide. So housing first, and rather than read this again, uh, that's uh, the definition that uh, we'll, we'll present tomorrow to council. Uh, it's the same one that was in the previous presentation of, to define housing first. With that said, um, I'm wondering if we should, uh, as a committee at some point, maybe the next meeting, is take another look at this and maybe we could put it into some simpler language that would be easier for people to understand. And I think this is a fairly complex and complicated definition, but maybe we could do a better job on it, I'm not sure. Anyway, next slide. Investigate the merits of forming an attainable housing co development corporation. Oops, there's a there's a, something we need to change. The S A A H C, and I'll change that. And send it to you back, uh, Holly. The resolution from April 26, 2022 uh, meeting was moved by Councillor Michael Shearson, second by Morgan McCannell 
be it resolved that the committee appoint Jerry McNulty and Muriel Scott to work with the CEO and the mayor to create a presentation proposal to neighboring municipalities for a South Gray affordable housing strategy and staff lead. And that was carried by the committee. Next slide. The point was is to investigate the merits of forming an attainable affordable, sorry, attainable housing development corporation. The Southgate Sahak uh, presented to council on May 25th, 2022 to the uh, township, townships committee of the whole and received support through the following resolution of council. And we are anticipating that they will approve this uh, resolution. So we're gonna ask them tomorrow. The angle of this presentation is that hopefully we will get this passed and that will be in the presentation for the other three municipalities. So we'll be asking council tomorrow to say, or the committee the whole to say, be it resolved that council receive the Southgate Affordable Attainable Housing Advisory Committee resolution number two, dated April the 26th, 2022 as information and that council directs staff to schedule presentations with the municipalities of Great Highlands, Hanover and West Great Councils to seek feedback, direction and support for a South Gray affordable housing strategy that would consider in the 2023 budget cycle to hire an employee to manage and set up a management board to create a South Gray affordable housing development corporation. Lindsay, I'm just gonna step back a bit. I think, did you change that resolution to be committee of the whole and then later ratify it as council later in the meeting as well? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought I seen. So if if someone attends tomorrow and it does read differently, at the first time round, we will say committee of the whole. The second time round, we'll say council. So committee of the whole will uh, ratify it, send it to council and council the same day will approve it. So the one we want in here is this one to show that council has approved this resolution. Next slide. So who are we uh, presenting to? Gray Highlands, Hanover, Southgate and West Gray. However, at a recent CO meeting in May of 2022, there was significant interest that this should include all Gray County lower tier municipalities. So, you know, I, I think this will grow, but we'll start start here and see what see what happens. Next slide. So our affordable housing proposal is that the proposal is to put housing talk into housing actions, create a Southgate affordable housing strategy. The core of the strategy would be to create an attainable housing development and mortgage corporation, the attainable uh, housing development and mortgage corporation would create partnerships and develop uh, developments and long-term funding models to deliver and manage the project life project life cycle as community rental affordable and attainable ownership housing spaces municipal uh, hdmc partners may need to consider consistent local affordable housing development policies and project development agreements next slide So the business model is, uh, the vision of the model is to create quality living spaces where people can live and work in our communities. The mission is to provide and maintain affordable housing that is safe and maintained by connecting people so they can securely raise their family in comfort and with respect. And the values are maintaining accessibility, accountability, collaboration, community vision, integrity and trust, partnerships, respect and security within the business model. Next slide. So the financial uh, support model is uh, the prior property revenues would be uh, obviously come in time. Revenue uh, obtained from the property rentals would uh, once established would uh, go to support the project. There'd have to be financial management and a way to make it sustainable. Municipal support and investments, land contributions, planning policy change, DC forgiven, DCs forgiven, building permits and inspections 
may also have to be reduced or, or uh, donated by, by the municipal partners. Grants and funders, federal, provincial, and county funding uh, to support projects, long-term mortgages, and financial management. Community partnerships, not-for-profits, builders, developers, and building maintenance. Next slide. Now the next slide is just a very rough uh, shot at um, you know some timelines of of how this would roll out over the first two years or the first 18 months anyway. But uh, if we get this moving, uh, hopefully in that you know June July we get create some municipal partnership interest in the program and organize partner planning meetings. Uh, later on in the year, create partnership agreements and establish budgets to fund the startup of the corporation. In 2023, hire a, the corporation's executive director and establish a board of directors. Create a corporation, so now kind of in that second quarter create of 2023, create a corporation and a strategic plan with identified partners. And in the last half of the year, identify affordable housing projects in each municipality to working with each of the local affordable housing committees. Next slide. And this is a look at the following three years from 24 to 26. And basically the three points would be to establish the corporation to become independent of the municipal funding support. Annual general meeting uh, for the corporation, annual reports to member councils and grow the capacity of the corporation and the affordable housing projects. Next slide. Now this may be hard to read on this small slide, but uh, it should be bigger tomorrow when we present. But uh, basically what this is doing is uh, kind of just showing the income in year one, two, and three until this uh, N4, until uh, it gets established. But the municipal contribution would be on the revenue side or income side would be 40,000 per municipality. There'd be four partners in year one, 160,000. In year two, there'd be five partners, uh, hopefully on board, uh, making it 200,000 in revenue and seven partners in year three and four for 280,000 in, in revenues. The uh, expenses would be uh, in employee and benefits in year one would be, uh, because it wouldn't be a full year, we would hope that benefits and salaries, uh, you know, 100,000 in year two, 120,000. And then in year three would obviously be adding a, an executive uh, assistant to support the, the, the employee. There'd be some travel costs, 10,000 first year, 20 and 20 in year three, two, three and four. Equipment and office supplies, 10, 20 and 30. Operating and odd, operating audit and legal costs, 40, 40 and 40 in each year to consume the uh, the municipal contributions in each one of those those years and the last slide is just uh thank you for listening and uh if there's any questions we would take those and uh, discuss them okay anyone who is uh in uh, um, attendance tonight any thoughts or questions about this proposal keeping in mind that this is a very early stages of this Yeah, and council, just to talk further on that, council may push back and have some ideas or suggestions or reject it, who knows, but uh, I think there's pretty good buy-in from council uh, on, uh, you know, we know they know we need to do something, so is this, uh, is this the way to go? We'll, we'll see what they think. Sure. <laughs> then at this point, I'm looking for a motion um, and a seconder to approve this proposal and encourage that it be presented tomorrow at the Committee of the Whole. Jan, would you be comfortable? Oh, Muriel? Muriel, Muriel, Muriel will make the motion. Jan, would you be comfortable seconding? Jan Powell will second. All in favor? Okay, we're going to assume carried.
Uh, okay, 7.4. Uh, we'll get Dave to speak to these last two items as well. Community Foundation, Gray Bruce, vital focus on so, housing. So I think what I'm gonna say is, I'm not gonna say a lot because the report's in front of you. What I would challenge you to do if you have time tomorrow, attend our council meeting because we've invited uh, Stuart Reed from uh, Community Foundation, Gray Bruce to present this report tomorrow. And I'm not even gonna touch it as far as, I mean, Stuart will do a great job because he has been immersed in that report. And I think uh, if you do have the time, uh, Holly could send out the meeting invite for tomorrow's meeting or Lindsay, one of them. And uh, you could attend that council meeting and see that, uh, that report being presented, uh, like I said. Um, unless there's any questions or comments on that, I think staff will leave that at that point. I'd sooner uh, spend a little bit of time on the density piece. And I've asked Clint to come and just talk about that a little bit. Could I just get some kind of clarification about the meeting tomorrow? Committee of the whole meeting, it uh, starts at 9 a.m., is that correct? No, 1.30 tomorrow. Uh -huh. Okay, so what you're encouraging uh, committee members to attend the council meeting in the afternoon or the committee of the whole in the morning or both? No, no, sorry. The committee of the whole is at 1.30 tomorrow and then they'll go into council to ratify those two, uh, uh, that resolution that we put forward to them. Uh, but it, everything will be done tomorrow at 1.30, after 1.30, tomorrow. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, go ahead, Clint. Just a second for Clint, before he gets started, there may, if you do have a conflict, we're having Stuart present uh, that right at the start, I believe, we're gonna move it up on the agenda and have him uh, delegate uh, really early on in the meeting. So likely between 1.30 and two o'clock, he'll present. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, so I'm just gonna touch on uh, this document that was put out by the uh, County of Gray. It was uh, prepared by, uh, for the County of Gray by a group of uh, students from the University of Guelph, I believe it was master's students, uh, graduate students, pardon me, from the University of Guelph Planning School. And they were really looking at density and, and how to uh, how to deal with it because um, it, sometimes it's a challenge for, for municipalities from a perspective of managing uh, people and their expectations with, with respect to density as well as developers and um, counselors and, and decision makers. So this document is sort of intended as an educational guide to, to answer some of those questions and address some of the, uh, the myths and, and facts about, about density. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole document. I encourage you to read it. It's not that uh, difficult to read, but um, it goes through how they how they came about. They did a number of interviews with with uh, individuals from developers to to planners to um, decision makers and that sort of thing. So um, then they break down some of the issues uh, for everything from economic to environmental and uh, they go through a case study uh, uh, addressing some issues with uh, density and that. And then <clears throat> the sections that I really liked uh, when I read through it are, are the current issues and in brackets they have solutions, which is on page 13 of, of the document there. And um, they go through everything from infrastructure and servicing and they talk about how it's not necessarily a, a, a greater demand on servicing. It's actually um, uh, beneficial to servicing in, the, in the, the sense that you can provide more housing with less pipes in the ground, with less um, ability, like with uh, less transportation costs and that sort of thing. Um, because it's closer, everything's closer together. Uh, 
An another would, example would be even school busing. You only have to stop once in front of a higher density unit as opposed to five times uh, when they're spread out. Um, and, and my my personal favorite is the NIMBYism one on page 14, um, which looks at not in my backyard is what that stands for, and how to address that and and deal with with everything from council decisions to to rate pairs to to sort of have the conversation with them that density isn't a bad thing and the reasons why it's it's not necessarily bad it um and then they go into further detail which i really like they on page 17 and 18 they have sort of myths and facts about density and um just as an example um, number two it says den densification reduces property values in, in surrounding areas and then they give the the fact on that is the value of property is determined by various factors and there is no concrete evidence to support the belief that densification will reduce property values. It can be argued that new construction indicates prosperity in a growing economy. And uh, furthermore, they, they talk about it in one of those case studies that some of the highest valued land in Toronto is high density development it's not the low density development it's the higher density so um that that's just one example there's there's eight little myths and facts there so it's a really easy read for for people to get an idea about that and then the i guess the most important one is the recommendations page on page 19 of the document which provides a number of suggestions both in changing uh, policy um, in official plans uh, and educating again using this this document and uh, uh, these suggestions in it as a tool to 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 help people understand about density and that you can have different kinds of density that just because we say say that it doesn't mean you're going to get a skyscraper next door to you that's a hundred stories high sort of thing um, density comes in different forms from a simple um, secondary suite being added to uh, basically the basement of a house so that it's now two two units uh, where you from the road you probably wouldn't even tell the difference between them to you get into semis then and triplexes and um sometimes you can get into the, the then the two-story walk out walk ups and duplexes and then it expands from there um and then it can go into the apartment buildings and so on um but to to have all of those things together is not a bad thing so what planners used to do is they'd say okay this whole area is going to be single family development and that was fine in the 70s and <laughs> 80s where you you just had that but now um, we find that it's better to have a, a more mixed use development where you are able to have a better sense of community because people are closer together um, some people are able to walk to work then because with mixed use developments, um, the, the idea is that you can live close to where you work and maybe you don't need a car or you can rely better or you can rely more on uh, transportation or active transportation and that sort of thing. So all of those things put together help with, with these uh, density requirements. So um, there's certainly been a lot of, um, I guess interest, I'll say, in increasing density uh, within the urban areas in particular. Um, one of the minister's zoning orders that was recently approved um, allows for just that sort of thing where we have uh, commercial and industrial uses along with uh, single detached uses, along with higher density townhomes, apartments, 
uh, work, what they call work and live townhouses, where the bottom floor is actually a, a place where someone can have an office or a hair studio or what what have you, and above it is where they live. Um, and then back to back uh, affordable housing units is also included in that, all within the same area. So that the thought and the hope is that that creates some synergies in terms of those the relationship between the house and the worker and where they're working and um, making uh, better choices and more affordable uh, choices for them. So um, that in a nutshell is what this document is, is basically going over some of those ideas and 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 just trying to educate people about about density and uh yeah it's it's a very very good read and uh i encourage you to read it if you have not okay thank you clinton um yeah it's it's uh, there's so much material it's hard to keep up with all the reading but when we have, uh, when we're sort of being pointed to some of these things, I think we should be heeding that and try to take in some of this stuff. Uh, Appendix B in that document is actually, uh, it's the interview questions that they use to develop this uh, document. And so it's kind of interesting to see some of the parallels between that and the survey that we're looking at. Some some things don't change. They're housing issues in, in uh, urban centers or housing issues uh, Sometimes they're the same in small towns and rural areas too. So. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. At this point, then we've wrapped up seven point seven staff updates. Um, <clears throat> again, just to clarify, tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is committee of the whole. That starts at one thirty. Am I correct? And we would uh encourage we are encouraged anyone from the committee who could sit in on that um and take part in that um we we, we do need to sort out tonight uh quickly who will present um i think it was a suggestion that we not ask martin uh to be involved in the presentations be, because he might have more value as a um a counselor in this situation so i guess the the question is is there anyone who would really like to be involved in the presentation of these two documents the uh, affordable attainable housing advisory group report to council or the south gray housing development corporation proposal um i'm, I'm not volunteering <laughs> I'm heading to Iceland tomorrow, so I am not available. Yeah, we'll okay. Be flying out of the country. You'll you'll do anything to get out of presenting a report, eh? <laughs> I, I'm quite I'm quite um, comfortable presenting, but so far <laughs> the timing hasn't worked well. <laughs> sure. Okay, Muriel, do you? Well, both Jan and I would have a seniors um, health fair planning committee meeting tomorrow afternoon, so I can't. Oh, okay. um, Dave, is this of better value if you as the CAO presents it? And because you had you and Holly had such a hand in developing it, yes. what you want that, for that, you want someone involved from the committee? It doesn't matter. That's count. That's the committee's decision. I think it would be good for you know at least you as vice chair to be there uh, to uh, you know if you if you want to say something or if you want to present. I mean that's that's the committee's decision. Uh, you know we uh, we can do either whatever kind of the committee would like to have happen. Um. I'm comfortable having you present it. It's a lot of work for you, but you've kind of been, uh, you've had a, a strong hand in the development of them. Uh, certainly, I will plan to be there uh, to support. Okay. Um, so, how, how do we leave it that way? If there's anything comes up in the morning, let me know. Okay. So, what we will, I mean, there's a couple of little minor changes, and if, if Jennifer can shove those changes she recommended, 
uh, we'll make those and, and uh, present that. Um, I think there would be times that I would maybe pivot to you for comment on, you know, maybe some of the points um, and uh, we, you know, go from there. Um, one thing I just want to jump back to and not to go back here in time, but this density report, I don't want to lose that report. And I'm wondering if the maybe Holly and I can bring back this list of recommendations for the next meeting to have some discussion so we don't lose that information because I think there's some really good recommendations and we can align them with what we are doing or bring them forward as maybe another strategy that we should look at uh, considering and, and working on in the next uh, you know six or so months that we have left here. That's just my I suggestion. That's, I think that's a great idea. Yes, it gives okay. us, uh, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, Moving on then to new business, uh, 8.1. Um, so it's been uh, talked about earlier and at some of our meetings about uh, discussions between the Lions Club and Southeast Grace Support Services uh, administrative staff uh, with regard to developing six or seven apartment units in the current medical center, the Lions Medical Building. Um, those discussions are ongoing, but we have been invited to send a delegation to present to their Southeast Gray Support Services uh, board meeting on June 9th. Uh, it'll be a late afternoon meeting. Um, I, I'm just assuming there might be a dinner included, um, but I, what I'm looking for tonight is a decision as to who will go and represent the uh, committee um, at that meeting. I am quite comfortable because I work there. I'm comfortable, I'll know just about everyone. I'm quite pre prepared and comfortable doing it, but I don't want the, if there's someone that who would really like to be involved, I want them to have this opportunity as well. And we don't have to necessarily decide tonight, but we will need to decide in the next week or so, the next week. So. What I can oh. do is perhaps uh, pull the committee members, and see if there's anybody that uh, wants to go. Jennifer? I'm still flying home from Iceland that day. <laughs> I'm, that's my day that I'm coming home. So that doesn't work for me again. Oh, okay. What time is that meeting? Do you know, Jerry? It likely will be, I would think if it's a dinner meeting, it'll probably start around 5.30. Probably 5.30 to 7.30 would be the sort of the, the time slot. Um, Muriel has a nice tie-in now with, uh, with the seniors fair and this, the work um, that uh, Maurice Hoisen, the executive director of Southeast Gray Support Services is a member of a province-wide group that are looking at long-term care alternatives uh, under the, uh, they call it aging in place. Um, we became interested in that early on because it does impact housing. If more seniors are staying in their homes, there are fewer units that are gonna be opened up for rental or purchase. So it is part of the, it is part of the housing discussion. So, uh, so how do we leave it this way? Um, if anyone, uh, anyone that would be Jan, oh, Yes, Jan or Muriel listening tonight. I'll follow up with the other committee members and see if anyone would like to. I'll plan on going. Uh, Dave, do you have a f one way or the other sense of this? How would you, what you would like to do? Well, I would say there's definitely strength in numbers. I would say you should have um, definitely likely three people or four. I mean, I think from a staff perspective, I would, I should attend just to represent. Uh, the agreement discussions we've had, just to bring the committee up to date on that. Uh, the Lions Club have had the agreement that we've drafted with them for some time. And uh, we have, I've contacted the, uh, I believe he's the secretary or treasurer or both maybe, and uh, elevated it to him to kind of, where are you guys at? They haven't made a decision yet. I've got to call into the chair. He's really hard to get a hold of, but, uh, I'm gonna keep calling him on a daily basis now and get an answer before, because I'm leaving a week today and uh, I'll be out for about a week and then uh, be back. Um, but I'd like to 
bring some conclusion to this agreement with the Lions Club. They have seen it, they haven't made a decision yet. But I, I think it's just a matter of working through the process. They seem very interested when uh, Al Madden and I talked to them about uh, the relationship between them and the medical center. And then this was the second part of it. So we've got an agreement and they're, they're considering it right now. But I'll put some urgency on on the discussions. And I think I'd like to hear what um, Southeast Gray supports urgency is for their decision making too, so we can pass that on. But hopefully we can have an answer. It may not be a, a complete agreement or a signed agreement, but it'll be hopefully some negotiations be uh, in the process. Sure. Okay. Um, okay, 8.2. The affordable attainable draft of the housing survey. Um, thanks to Jennifer for the work on this and uh, early on uh, Muriel and Martin. Um, I uh, have uh, some comments that I will forward uh, and a couple of uh, uh, shots of some changes and some um, sort of some editing things that uh, Jennifer, Jennifer has provided. And I'll forward that to you, Dave uh, or Holly. Um, just to to uh, kind of tidy things up a little bit, and this was going to go on to Survey Monkey, I believe, through the township. Um, so I'm not sure we're ready to release it yet. It might be good to have more uh, committee members take a look. So if we could bring this back for the uh, uh, June meeting, and then make a decision, then and maybe at that time also a clear list of where this is going to be going. That is that okay with everyone? Um, okay, uh, nine correspondence, 9.1 Ontario Permacultural Correspondence Affordable Attainable Housing Letter. Um, I think we'll leave it up to committee members to read that. Uh, I read it. It's interesting. Um, but I'm not sure how it impacts us. Holly, yes? Um, so we just need a mover and a seconder. Um, if you wish to discuss them, otherwise we can just accept them for information. Uh, I'm not sure myself at this point. I'm wondering if we bring this back to the June meeting for discussion, that'll give everyone a chance to sort of uh, read through it. It's it's pretty detailed uh, document, uh, kind of some interesting stuff in there. I'm just not sure how it applies to us at the stage we're at right now, uh, but can we bring it back uh, for the June meeting? And if we do that, what do you need, Holly, for the minutes? Uh, yeah, we could just get a, a formal vote to put this uh, item of correspondence on the June meeting. I think that's okay. fine, Lynn, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's okay. Well, instead of receiving it for information tonight, we'll just um, be it resolved that the committee defer the item of correspondence to the June, whichever the date is, meeting. Yep. Okay. Is that, uh, could we have a, do we need a mover and a seconder then? Yes. Could I please. have a motion then, please? And a uh, mover and a seconder. Going to be Muriel, Jennifer, or Jan? <laughs> I'll move okay, it. Okay, Muriel. Muriel, if you'll if you'll make the motion, Jennifer will second. Okay. All, all in favor? Jan, are you okay with that? Okay, Jan is in favor. All right. Uh, next meeting, uh, Tuesday, June the twenty eighth, twenty twenty two, at seven p.m. Is there anything that anyone would have liked to have said that didn't get a chance to say tonight? David? I just want to go back and clarify on 8.2, the affordable housing survey. Um, I'm wondering if, if you want to get that out quickly, would we have a, a kind of a final draft to go to the 28th meeting, say by uh, you know the 10th of June or so? I just wonder if it might be advantageous to make some create some awareness with council and get their support for it. Uh, that and, and maybe they have some input that we could then take 
to the committee on the 28th. I'm just wondering if that would be, if you want it to go to council after you approve it, um, then we're into July the 6th, I think is our next council meeting. Can I'm this, not asking uh, can you. this be Go ahead. Can this be presented? Uh, can this be presented tomorrow? Or it's not That's on the it. agenda? It's not on the agenda, and I would sooner take it directly to council with a staff report. Okay, let's do that. Okay, if that's okay, fine with the members. Yeah. Uh, yes, okay, Jan, Muriel, Jennifer, Jan, are you okay with that? Okay, very good. All right. Um, so before we adjourn, I just want to thank everyone. Um, we have done some important work here tonight. I think history will show. I uh, want to thank Clinton and uh, Lindsay for your involvement, Holly always for your uh, your work, and uh, Dave for all you've done. And uh, and for uh, this is this is important stuff that we're doing. And so thank you very much for taking it seriously. And uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. So. Uh, item 11 is adjournment. Uh, anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? It'll be Muriel or Jennifer or Jan. <laughs> Jennifer, okay, motion to adjourn. Do you need a seconder, Holly? Nope, that's okay. All right, thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good night. Have a good night.